What's up party people, my name is Matt Zeffi. Today I'm going to show you how to make an advanced cinemagraph. I guess advanced just makes it sound a little bit fancier, but if you're into fancy stuff, stay tuned for the rest of this video. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I would really appreciate the follow, and this is actually where I post most of my cinemagraphs too. Um, I'm trying to get more into cinemagraphs, I find them really fun, uh, they're a little bit more extra than pictures, and I, I really enjoy making them, so I plan to make some more in the future, but if this is just a little behind the scenes video on how I go about making these. If you don't know what a cinemagraph is, I'm not sure that an advanced cinemagraph is right for you, but I'll try and make it as easy as possible. It's not a crazy difficult process that just a, takes a little bit more time that really will spice up your Instagram, Facebook page, whatever you're posting them to. So I can't recommend Cinemagraphs enough. So without further ado, let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you how to get these things cranked out. So you'll first want to start with your time lapse. And I have this time lapse here. I rendered this all through Lightroom already, so you'll see that my shadows are a little bit brighter. I actually brought those up. It's a pretty flat image, not too flat but the saturation is dialed back just a touch. And basically what I did is I put my camera on a tripod or my Joby Gorillapod, and I basically went out there and just struck a pose. So you'll see me here looking like, a, like an idiot, just falling and falling again off this fence. It's actually really funny to see, but one of these is bound to be good, and I don't know which one I picked. Let me see if I, oh, I picked this. I ended up picking this still for my final take. So basically what I did from there is I cut this down. So this was my first frame. So this is the frame that I want to use, not this one. Did I cut it out? Rude. I'm gonna use this one for this, uh, actually no. So I cut it out, let me grab that again. This was the frame that I wanted to use. So basically everything after this with me in it is garbage, but I'm going to let me see, come here, and fine, once I leave the frame, I'm gonna cut there. I'm actually going to expand this again. But what I wanna do is come to the beginning here, and I'm gonna come up to, I'm gonna search frame hold, because I never know where it is. So it's gonna be in clip, video options, frame hold options, source time code, yada, 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 click okay. This is gonna freeze this frame for the duration of this clip. But under this, you still have your time lapse, um, which is kind of funky because the, the lighting is changing. As you can see, this time lapse is a is a, a sunset time lapse, which came out pretty sweet. It was on the Hudson River. So what you need to do is superimpose this image onto your second one. And I find that the best way to do that is to doing, do an annoying uh, mask around it all. You could rotoscope. I like to keep it in Premiere, keeping it real. And um, since I already did this, I will show you just a couple points how you could do it. Basically, all you want to do is just, you know, surround yourself with these points. And once that's done, you'll have a cutout of yourself on this time lapse. I'm not gonna do that whole process now, but because uh, it's a very tedious process. And you want it really good because you don't want many, <laughs> as you can see, this is really screwed up. You don't want many surrounding areas around you because that's gonna throw off the whole time lapse. So for now, I'm going to pick what I had from over here. I'm gonna pick what I already did, and I will show you how I got the results. Now my time lapse is nested down here below. Uh, I don't remember why I nested it. I think it had something to do because I, I put it in reverse. Basically, my final, um, my final product. It was the sun rising, then coming back down. I just kept repeating it over and over again because it was supposed to be like a loop, and it was supposed to kind of replicate what it would look like from a day to night time lapse, even though the sun was just going up and down. But it still looks pretty cool. 
that's why I nested that area. But let me show you the mask that I made around myself in this clip. So here's the mask of myself. As you can see, there's so many points in there that I had to add. It was uh, kind of annoying. That's why these things are, I guess, more advanced. Um, like I said, you, you could do it. I think it's a little bit more easy to do in After Effects. I usually like to keep things in Premiere uh, unless I have to. All right, I can't find it. Sweet, awesome, good to know. But yeah, I like to keep things into Premiere unless I absolutely have to go outside of Premiere. I don't think it's hard enough where I would need to even leave Premiere, so this worked out pretty well. Um, as you can see, if you don't color correct your superimposed image along with your background image, the lighting's gonna be off, and that's where most of the issues with this happen. So the lighting is completely different. As you can see, the borderline around myself and myself is extremely bright while my background image is dark. And that aligns well with this, where the image was around, like the image of myself was taken while the sun was still up. So once the sun set in that time lapse, which you might, ha might not have an issue with if you're not using a time lapse, but if you're using a time lapse, you're gonna have the issue with the, the shifting of light. And basically to circumvent that, I applied this lumetri color, uh, not an adjustment layer, I applied a color correction on it. And what I did was I adjusted the exposure. So once I turn this on, you'll notice that this is going to change once it applies, there it goes. So I darkened myself when it was nighttime, and as you can see, it gradually increases as it becomes daytime and the sun rises. So uh, the exposure obviously is going to rise with it. So yeah, that's how you pull off the lighting changes and you, you compensate for the changing in lighting, which if you're using a time lapse is going to be an issue, almost always. So from there, I wanted to duplicate it because I wanted it to be like around a minute long since I knew it was going to output to Instagram. So I duplicated it and I had my bottom sequence just it, the sun rises and it comes back down, sun rises and it comes back down, and all the while um, the lighting on my body also goes up and goes down as well. But here's one of the biggest parts when you're making an advanced cinemagraph. It makes it a little bit more interesting to add a little bit of motion. So the way I added motion is I took an adjustment layer, put it all on top of pretty much everything. This is the easiest way to transform your, your whole, all your layers because otherwise it'd just be affecting certain ones and that's gonna be kind of annoying. So you're gonna wanna use an adjustment layer for this. Now I added a color correction to this. I'm not sure what I added on top of it, but it just helped match everything a little bit better. I'm gonna turn that off for the sake of this. But I add a transform effect onto my adjustment layer so that I could add a little bit more motion into the overall image. And now it's like a real video, you know? It's not just like pictures and it's, it's just a, it's almost like a real video. A lot of people even like have said that. So here's what I did in my transform effect. Now mine actually goes to the music that I added, which I added this, I'm not gonna play the music for copyright reasons, but it was like an Odessa song. And so I like was zooming in according to the music and you'll be able to kind of see that if my computer doesn't lag too much. Looks like it is. So I just, basically what I wanted to do, I wanted it to reveal my me on the fence from the sunset. So you see the sun, the sun rise, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's actually a sunset, but technically the sun's rising for the sake of this time lapse. So the sun's rising and you see that time lapse and it's actually zooming out from there since I have the ability to zoom out because it's a time lapse, so it's really high res. So I'm zooming out from there and then that reveals me on the fence, like balancing over here. And, and then from there, I did like an ease in and it eases in for the remainder of the video, then it like flies in. And it's just really interesting that you could, you could add all these effects that it's just like it switches around a lot. It makes it a little bit more of a fun video. So that pretty much concludes how I particularly did this cinemagraph. I do have another method of making cinemagraphs um, that was even more advanced than this. 
So maybe I'll do like a third one. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And there you have it. That's pretty much how you can make it a little bit more advanced cinemagraph. You can go further with these, shorter with these. Everyone's gonna think they're cool because they are cool. One of the biggest reasons why I like these things is because they just really spice up your feed and they're not so typical compared to some of the pictures that you might be posting. I know that I think it's a breath of fresh air when I see these things on my timeline. That about concludes our video for today. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. I know I haven't been posting as much as I would like to have been in the recent weeks and it's because things have been getting crazy busy, a lot of changes happening in my career path, so um, I guess a lot of announcements coming soon, that's pretty exciting. But like always, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you got something out of it, hit that subscribe button, hit those notifications, just like do it all, I would really appreciate it. I'll give you a big hug if you do. Thank you very much for watching, take care. So, I'm